so I am an avid viewer of the Alpine Skiing World Cup and with technical slalom races, impressive GS and high speed action filled downhill races, there is one race that still stands out from the rest. The Kitzbühel downhill. Looking to take top position from the youngster Odermatt and Biat Voigt is there! Between the sweeping establishing shots, quick panning and immersive follow drone, the hand on cam race is not only the most spectacular race, but also an innovative television masterpiece. But before we get started, if you have seen my channel before, you might wonder why there all of a sudden is a video on alpine skiing. And that is simply because I want this channel to reflect who I am and the things that I am interested in. And alpine skiing is a big part of that. And if this video gets a good reception, I might do more of these kind of styled videos. But anyways, in this video we are going to touch on a lot of different things. We are going to talk about the cameras they are using and how they are being used. Then we are also going to talk a little bit about sound, the TV production, behind the scenes and also of course drones. But important to note though is that you have to take the information in this video with a little bit of salt. I tried to do my best finding information on this kind of topic but it was really hard. And let's just say I have watched a lot of videos where I didn't understand a single word. <laughs> so if I do have something wrong or if you have something more to add, let me know down in the comments so that I can like and heart your comment and that way more people can see it. All right, so the first race down Hanamkan was in the season of 1930 to 31, but the first broadcasted year was in 1959. and they had a total of four different cameras capturing the whole race. This year, 2022, it's a total of 49. And to put that into perspective, FIST recommends broadcasters to have between 14 and 20 cameras to capture a World Cup downhill race. First of all, let's talk about the establishing shots, or as FIST call them, the beauty shots. These are the ones showing the beautiful mountains and scenery. And there are two ways this could be done. It could either be by using a drone, and then they would probably use something like a DDI Inspire or a Alta X, Alta 8. So it's either that or they are using a helicopter. Then they probably have an advanced camera stabilizer so that they can get those long sweeping shots without any shake in the footage. The camera is then connected to a control panel that the camera operator can use to control the camera as the pilot is flying the helicopter. Okay, but next up, let's talk about the starting area. This allows there to only be one camera in the warm up area getting the emotions of the athletes as they are warming up. This angle is captured by a camera operator on foot with a shoulder rig. But this angle, together with these small little mics on the start, they are worth gold in TV value, especially when it's time for slalom. We love you, Sienhuisen. And then you have a cable cam. This is an angle we don't see that often in the World Cup, and the cameras used are often called block cameras, and they are attached to a set of long wires making it possible for it to go back and forth for creating some very interesting and dynamic camera movements for the start moment. And another camera angle we don't see that often is the top down straight from above on the starting house. Very interesting. And then you have the camera attached to a crane. This is the angle that we are used to see in the World Cup. It's super dynamic and camera operators can get really close to the athletes and they have a large range of motion giving us that starting sequence that we all know and love. The last camera in the starting area is a normal broadcasting camera. These cameras can be found spread across all of the course and here in Kitzbühel they have the first one just a little bit further down just making sure that it will be able to capture the whole start shows. This gives us a total of at least six different cameras just capturing the start moment and as the athlete is making his way down there are multiple different cameras along the way and most of them are the ones that I call the normal broadcasting cameras. And they are the bread and butter for the alpine skiing broadcasting. And these cameras are so-called EFP, electronic field production cameras. These super versatile cameras don't have any video recording capabilities on their own. They transmit their video signal down to the broadcasting brain using fiber optics. This means they have to pull a long cable all the way from the bottom of the hill all the way up to the first camera at the start. And that is a more than three kilometer long cable. And don't even get me started on the people operating these broadcasting cameras because they have to be real ninjas because some of the lenses that they use on these cameras are so-called Canon DigiSuper 100XS lenses. And these 25 kilo brick lenses have a focal length of between 9.3 all the way up to 930 or with a two times extender 
18.6 to 1860 millimeter. And these lenses cost about the same amount as my car times 10. And now imagine that you are 100% fully zoomed in at 1860 millimeters and then a skier passes in front of you at 140 kilometers an hour and you need to pan that 25 plus kilos lens to capture the moment. I mean, how? How do you even manage to frame that? And then you have the slow-mo cameras. FIS has a minimum of at least one slow-mo camera at every single World Cup race, but recommends a minimum of two. These are there to capture the athlete mid-action as they are making that perfect turn or as they are struggling. And I just love these cameras. But now let's talk about the thing that has brought the most amount of headlines, the drones. This has been a big deal for multiple different reasons. Let's just say FIS doesn't have the best relationship with drones. Il a une 08 d'avance. Normalement Marcel. Oui, il est pas parti pour assurer là. Oh là là, le drone s'est passé le drone. That accident happened in Madonna di Campiglio in 2015 and that is an 11 kilo drone that fell out of the sky and almost ended Hirsch's career. And ever since that accident, drones have been kind of banned by FIS, which is understandable. But in 2021, FIS changed president. Gianfranco, Gianfranco I'm sorry about that. Gianfranco Casper stepped down and Swedish Johan Elias took his place as the new president of the Federation. And as the new president, he launched a working group that would rethink and come up with new ideas on how to broadcast the sport. Naturally, drones is one of the things that came up in that discussion. But as you might have noticed while watching the race, these drones are not your normal long sweeping shots. These drones are extremely fast gives the viewer an angle that almost feels like you join the skier racing down the hill. And the drones are so-called racing FPV drones. One second. And they are drones that look like this. And the drones that they used are five inch drones, which means they are five inches from this motor down to this motor down here. And the one they used is said to weigh around 600 grams, a bit lighter than the 11 kilo one they used in Madonna. And these drones have two different cameras on them. They have one smaller one in the front here that is used by the pilot to see where he is flying because these drones are controlled by looking through a pair of metaverse-like goggles that stream the video feed from the camera to the goggles. And here in Gitzbill they use the DJI digital FPV system. And then there's the second camera that records the live feed that we can see on the television. And that video feed from the drone is probably transmitted to a receiver that is hardwired into the fiber optics, the fiber optic wire that goes from the bottom of the hill all the way up to the top. The same fiber optics that have the live feed from all of the other cameras from the slope. Since they are so small, uh, the motors have a super high RPM which means that it's going to drain a lot of battery. Flight time on the batteries you get is actually really bad. I personally get around three to four minutes on my FPV drones and that is quite normal for a drone like this but it can range up towards six, seven, maybe eight minutes. This means they could probably only capture one skier per battery before they had to land, maybe two. So to pull this off, they had to be four people working on this. And the team consisted of one pilot controlling the drone, one person in charge of safety and communication with air traffic control, one person responsible for technology, and one for the live feed. They had to stay in contact with air traffic control all time, because if the airspace would be occupied by let's say a helicopter they would have to go down and land they were not allowed to fly over people or other cameras either and if there were bad weather they would have to land the drone as well so some pretty hard restrictions but understandable but the Hanum camera race is not only special because they decided to use drones you can really see the difference and the years of experience they have in Austria capturing alpine skiing. They know exactly where to put the camera so they get a nice mix of close-ups close to the action but also a healthy amount of wider angle shots where you can see what the skier is actually doing so you can look at the technique and compare it with other skiers. But now let's talk some more about what's going on behind the scenes because you can have as many cameras as you possibly would like but you still need to take that video feed from those cameras and get it out to the world. And the race is broadcasted by ORF. They are the Austrian state-owned TV channel 
and the producer of the Hanon cameras is Michael Kergler. He has a total of 49 different cameras at his disposal and they all get fed into this mess of screens and buttons. This is where they edit the video feed together with the audio and then broadcast it out to all of the different broadcasters in almost 20 different countries. Some other fun facts is that FIS has a broadcaster manual. In this document you will find a step-by-step -step list for every single step that the broadcasters need to take to capture the event. And some of the stated things in that document are illustrate the speed and technique of the competitor, the ski and boot technique, the athlete's weight and position over the ski and the jumps. The plane of the snow and the personality of the mountain. At the bottom of this document you will also find a list of ideas from FIS on how to improve the presentation of this sport and these things are things that we might see be tested out in the future in upcoming races. All right so that is it. I really hope you guys enjoyed or that you learned something. This video took an incredible amount of time to make and I might have gotten in over my head not realizing how, exactly how much and how hard it would be especially when most of it isn't even in English. So if you did enjoy this video please do leave a thumbs up it would really help me out and to end this video off i just would like to say thanks to orf for producing some great television and to johan elias and the rest of the face for pushing how the sport is being shown in media i think it is super important for the future of this sport we need more innovation like this but i would love to hear what you guys think so let me know down in the comments and i will see you guys in the next one peace